Hi, I'm back, but this time with an activity, which can become interesting if you fully participate. Here you will see two sentences. One of them is right. You have to choose the right option. So grab a paper and pen to mark your score. Let's see who gets the highest marks. All the best. Here we go. So here is the first sentence. My boss is behind me for the annual report. My boss is after me for the annual report. You can pause the video to think about it and mark the right answer. Okay, so the right answer is my boss is after me for the annual report. Why? Because to be after something or someone means to look for something, to pursue something, to get something. Okay, so your, my boss is not behind me in reality. But he is pressurizing me maybe for the reports because he wants the report. Okay. So we can see some other examples like the police are after the thief. Okay. They are looking for the thief. The next set of sentences. She was tired because she had been working hard the whole day. The second sentence. She was tired because she had been hardly working the whole day. Hard, hardly, confusing. What's the right answer? Yes, the first one. To work hard means to work a lot. Now hard is such an adjective which becomes an adverb without ly. So it remains the same. Hard, an adjective as well as an adverb. Hardly is another adverb which has a completely different meaning. Which means almost nothing, almost not, just a little, barely, okay. So, if you think of this sentence that she hardly worked, that means she didn't work much, so she can't be tired. Yes, you can reframe the sentence saying that she was so tired that she could hardly work, okay. Then it is fine that she was tired and because of that she could not work much, okay. We can look at some other sentences like, she was speaking so softly that I could bear, I could hardly hear her or I could barely hear her. Exactly. Okay. So, that's the reason the first sentence is the right sentence. Okay. Let's look at the next one. There is only one criteria. There is only one criterion. Okay. Which is the right one? Yes, there is only one criterion is the right answer because criteria is the plural of criterion. So, it cannot be one. The next set of sentences is a little similar to this one. Rain and fog are natural phenomena. Rain and fog are natural phenomenon. So, tell me what's the right answer? Yes, you can apply the same logic. Phenomena is the plural form and so when you're talking about rain and fog, that means two things. So, you have to use phenomena. So, that's the right answer. Okay, the next one is a little complicated one. I'm going to give you two sets. Okay, first go through all four sentences and then choose your answer. Okay, so the first sentence, it's a great feature. Without apostrophe, second one, it's a great feature. Third sentence, its features are unique. Again, without an apostrophe, it's features are unique. Take a moment, think about it and then note your answer. Okay, now let's see the answers. In the first case, 
the first sentence is the right one. Whereas in the second case, the second sentence is right. Okay, now let's understand this. In the first sentence, it's a great feature means it is a great feature. So, it's with an apostrophe means it is a contraction of it is or it has. Okay, whereas when it is without an apostrophe, it is a possessive pronoun which means something belongs to it or is possessed by it. Okay, so if I say that this phone is fantastic, its features are amazing. That means I'm talking about the features of this phone, the features possessed by this phone. Now, if you get confused whether to use its with an apostrophe or without an apostrophe, try using it without the contraction. So try using it, putting it in a sentence as it is or it has and then see whether it, it looks, it sounds well, great or not. Okay. For example, if I say that um, its features are great, okay, then you cannot say it is features are great or it has features are great. Okay. It's a great feature. Yes, it is a great feature. It's great features means it has great features okay so just apply this and then you will understand the right option okay now let's see the next one now again i am showing you two sets of two sentences okay the first set this dress is too loose for me this dress is too loose for me think about it but before giving your answer, let's look at the next set. Don't lose the house keys. Don't lose the house keys. Okay, now give me your answer. Okay, so in the first set, the first sentence is the right sentence. And in the second case, the second sentence is the right one. Okay, now let's understand why. When you say that something is loose, means it is not fitting well. In case of clothes, it's not fitting well. Or something which is not fixed well or fastened well. Okay? But to lose means to, to be defeated, to be unsuccessful or to misplace something. Okay? So in the first case, this dress is too loose for me that means it is not fitting well on me and in the second case don't lose the house keys means don't misplace the house keys okay now let's see the next one this is a very common sentence i am going to her party i am going for her party to for which is the right option yes the first one is the right one I'm going to her party. Going to is like you're going to a place, you're going to an event. And for means you're talking about the purpose of something. So I may say that I'm going to her party for you. Means I'm going just to accompany you or because you have requested me to come along. Okay, so then I can say I'm going to her party for you but otherwise it is going to the party okay now let's see the next set of sentences one of my friends lives in the usa one of my friend lives in the usa tell me what is the right answer yes the first one one of my friends lives in the usa now, when you are saying one of something, that means it is obvious, it is one of many. Otherwise, I could have said, my friend lives in the USA or a friend of mine lives in the USA. Okay, is that clear? Okay, now let's see the next. Can you cope with this stress? Can you cope up with this stress? 
cope up with or cope with what is the right, right choice yes it is cope with cope with means to manage to manage something to deal with something okay so it is always followed by the preposition with and not up and now the last one are you going to attend the next meeting are you going to attend the next meeting attain attained confusing okay yes the second sentence is the right one to attend means to be present at some event or at some place to attain means to achieve to succeed i may say that i am going to attend this class to attain my goals that means i will be present at this class so that i will learn something important and i'll be able to attain my goals okay that's it from my side wasn't it fun i'm looking forward to your scores in the comment section if you like this video then please hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel i would also like to get your feedback about what kind of videos you would like to see okay so i'm looking forward to it see you soon bye bye take care